Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. Since you guys liked my previous two videos about how to analyze any chart from scratch without using any indicators, just by using price action and market structure. And as promised, this time we'll make analysis on Netflix on a stock, right? Since last time we did CAD JPY and then we did GBP CAD. If you haven't watched it yet, I will make sure to attach the links in the description section below. So let's get started. Cheers. So, so as usual, for those who are, who are familiar with the trading style, we always start from the weekly and daily time frames, zoom out and then zoom in to monitor the price action to know where we stand in the market, right? We have to know if we are overall bullish, if you are overall bearish or you are stuck inside a range like the situation here, as you can clearly see. Then when we identify uh, our key rejection levels and market structure, then we zoom into lower time frames like uh, H4, H1 or even M30 time frame to look for possible entries. For example, here we'll be looking for possible trend following buy setups unless price breaks it downward and so on. So let's get started, right? First of all, we start with the weekly time frame. We zoom out to the max to know where we set the market. And we can clearly see that Netflix is overall bullish, right? And yes, we have a range here, price broke it upward, and we have a, a trend continuation. It's like, uh, here we go. It's, it's like a, a symmetrical triangle, and then price broke it upward, and we have a trend continuation. So we know that from weekly time frame that we are overall bullish, right? And price seems to be, uh, the buyers seems to be very, very strong. However, if we zoom in a little bit, we can see that we had an impulse movement and starting from here, the market seems to be stuck inside this range. So in this case, we have two possible scenarios, either a trend reversal, right? or like here, like this symmetrical triangle, a trend continuation. But we can't know now, as we always say, we react, we don't predict. So please don't try to catch the exact top or bottom, or don't try to predict what's going to happen. For, for example, I know many traders who predict that Netflix is going uh, to, to break to the upside. And, uh, and of course, in this case, they will buy immediately. Always wait for extra confirmation for the break of the structure. For in this example, if price breaks uh, this, uh, this structure upward, then and only then we can say that the bulls are gaining, uh, are gaining full control again. But from weekly time frame, we know that the bulls, the bulls are tired as price was making higher highs and higher lows with a very small range with a very, very uh, small corrective movement, it's almost flat, right? Because we know that in an uptrend, price would be making higher highs and higher lows, and usually the corrective movement would be, would be big, right? But here, as you can see, the uh, buyers are not letting the sellers make this corrective movement. As you can see, impulse, nearly flat, or, or a range corrective, and then impulse, right? So impulse, range impulse however however starting from here right the the bulls the bulls are losing momentum why how how do we know that the bulls are losing momentum because they aren't able to push price like before if they were able to push price like before we would see a range impulse range impulse right here we have a range and we would see an impulse However, we can clearly see that the bulls couldn't make a high, even a higher high, which means that they are losing momentum. Here's, here's our, uh, our previous high. And in this case, since, here we go, since we don't, we, price never made it there, we, we can call it our, our all time high or also known as A, T and H. Okay, so Netflix is currently sitting, uh, sitting around its Give me a moment. So Netflix is currently sitting around its current new 
because the price was around here, we uh, he was he was he was our all-time high. Then price made a new new all-time high. So for now, here's or here, if we can be precisely, here's our new uh, new all-time high. So for Netflix to trade any higher, it has to break above this area, right? So for now, from a wiki perspective, we can say that we know that the, the market might reverse. We know that the buyers aren't strong enough as they were before, but the reversal isn't confirmed yet. Why? And when the reversal would be confirmed? So price is making higher highs and higher lows, right? Higher highs and higher lows. So until the price breaks below the previous low, we can not say that the market is, is now reversed. Okay, let me let me show to you clearly let me zoom in okay so higher high high and higher high and higher low right so here's our last low around here then price made a new low here's our last low and then a higher high then price made a new a higher low so higher low higher low higher high higher high and here we go, then price got stuck inside the same. Sure. So here's here's our our previous high and here's our previous low, right? So until price breaks below the previous low, we can say that we have a shift, shift in momentum from bullish to bearish. So for now, from weekly time frame, we can say that we are cur currently stuck inside a range and we'll be looking for a break to look for sell setups or a break to look for buy setups, right? And of course, since this big range is from weekly time frame, we will be zooming into lower time frames now and look for possible buy setups here and sell setups here. Since this uh, this small impulse movement on weekly time frame may be a big impulse movement on M on M30 or H1, right? So for now. We, we know that from a market structure perspective where we are in the market now let's zoom out and try to identify our key uh, support and resistance levels and uh, as you can see we can't really find uh, any support or resistance as price keeps on making new uh, new all-time highs right so but we can see that here we go let me delete uh, the previous ones we, we can see that in this case, since price, we don't have a typical support and resistance. For example, a typical support and resistance would be when we have many failed attempts to, to break above a level. In this case, it's a resistance, right? And here we go. Or many failed attempts to, to break below a level. In this case, we would have a support. And of course, when a resistance is broken, it becomes support. And when a support is broken, it becomes resistance, right? But since price keeps on making new all-time highs, if we zoom out, we can't really draw any support and resistance. That's why, and in this case, we, we, we go for round numbers. For example, here we go. Here we have the 400 round number, which is a very, very strong psychological level right here we go and as you clearly see price reached the 400 and then rejected it downward then price couldn't break above it then we had a nice breakout and here we go let me zoom in we had a breakout of the structure which as mentioned before is a symmetrical triangle right here we go and then price broke our 400 upward with a very big momentum candle and we had a nice retest and a, a trend continuation. That's exactly what we want to see here. Here, as you can see, price is forming. Let me delete the previous ones. Sometimes I get overexcited. So here we go. So price is currently trading inside this range. We'll see it even better on daily time frame. So for price to continue trading higher, it has to break above this area. And then just like here, a big momentum candle, then a retest, retest here we go and then we'll be looking for trend following buy setups but for now we can't really know what may happen and of course price can still go down break this uh, symmetric triangle downward and then we'll have we'll have a, a bearish movement so that's our first key rejection level right and we also have one here around 250 right 250 which is a very strong 
around number also price pocket upward retest continue upward then it's acting as support support and support right let me delete it and here we go and of course we can even do there around 100 and so on but we will we, we won't really need it now as price is sitting around here let's see if we have any round numbers here let's see the 500 here we go yes 500 is a very very strong round number okay and let's see here we have the 600 right which is, which is also a strong round number so let's make this one in red this one and let's make it in green not this one it's too bright and here we go let's make this one in green as well so green blue green blue right so price is currently sitting inside this floor we'll be looking for cell setups around our upper one and buy setups around our lower one and price is currently sitting inside this floor that's why we are looking for cell setups now especially around our especially around our upper uh, uh, red um, red trend line here for forming like an ascending triangle and we all know that an ascending triangle is a bullish trend continuation pattern so we can expect a break to the upside right but 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 as i always say uh, at uh, an ascending triangle can also be broken downward okay so so uh, as i always say stay, stay open-minded and and always follow the price as if you are only looking for buy setups and price may break this one downward you may miss the bearish movement okay so let's delete uh, these ones so from weekly time frame look look how many information we, we can gather just from weekly time frame imagine if we zoom into lower time frames and as i always say it's always better to start from the weekly than daily than zoom in Many, many traders start with the M30 and the H1 and then zoom out. It's always better to see the big picture. Then we'll zoom in to look for uh, uh, buy, buy, or, buy or sell opportunities. So let's continue from here. We know that we are, in, we are uh, inside this floor. We'll be looking for buy setups around our lower 500 round number and sell setups around our upper 600, right? Let me uh, remove. Here we go. So not now we already know that 600 and 500. And the good thing here that we have, we also have extra confluence. For example, here we also have a, a trend line, right? We have this ascending triangle. So here it would be a very good opportunity to look for buy setups for high probability buy setups. Why? Because we have this trend line, which is a trend following, and we have this. 500 uh, which acts as support it's not a typical support right because price didn't make fa many failed attempts to break above or below it but uh, as mentioned before it's a very strong round number and of course we'll be looking for buy setups around the upper one which is also very close to the 600 so that that's what we know from weekly time frame and we can also zoom out a little bit and let's see if we can draw any trend lines yes we can here we go I always like to, to make the, this kind of trend lines in brown. Here we go. So, so that I know that this kind of, of trend line is a long-term trend line, what I call outer trend line. So O-U-T-E-R, it's an outer trend line to, to give us an overall bias and overall direction. And I always try to make an offset. Here we go. And we can even make it a little bit lower and this one a little bit higher. But even if, if we kept it this way, a parallel to this one, right, here we go. I always consider that, uh, here's some, something new. I always consider that this area acts as an, over, as an overbought area in this case. And this one acts as an oversold area. So that's exactly how you know if the market is overextended or overbought or oversold simply from price action without using RSI or stochastic CCI or whatever your oscillator would, 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 you would like to use. You can know if the market is overextended or overbought simply by making an offset to, to your trend line. And of course, this is an over both area right it's not and of course the oscillators don't give you 
uh, 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 direct signals to buy and sell. Don't 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 ever you don't ever follow the oscillators blindly. So, but it gives you an idea, or it gives you a hint that a reversal might occur from here. And of course, price can still break it upward and make a retest, as mentioned before, and continue trading higher. But let, let's keep it this way. And as you can see, we can know that here's here's one more confluence that price may may reject from here. So look 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 how beautiful uh, our weekly time frame looks now, right? And look how many information we already gathered. Now let's zoom into our time frames and let's see if we can add anything on daily. I doubt that we can add anything since we already drew many many things from weekly time frame. So here's our view from daily time frame, and, and here we go. And if you believe that this one is already broken, yes, it was a very big gap. Sorry, here we go. It was a very, very big gap. You, you, you will see many gaps, uh, especially in stocks. Here we go, and here we go. We have many, many gaps, and usually the gaps act as potential supply and demand. So as you can see, when you have a gap, price will go and fill it, then go down, okay? So here we go, here we have a gap, price now is going to fill it, and then it may go up. So because I don't want to give you a financial advice because nothing is clear. We had a gap, price went to fill it and went down. We had a gap, right? Price went down to fill it and price moved up. Here we go. So now we have a gap, as you can clearly see, and here's here's the lower bound of the gap, and price may pro probably reverse from here, especially that especially that we have a 500 and we have our lower red trend line, right? So he, around here would be a very very strong uh, a strong area to look for buy setups. Look look how how much information we gather from weekly and daily time frame to know where we stand in the market and to know when to look for buy setups and when to look for sell setups. Look, here we have the gap, right? We have the 500, we have this red trend line. And the upper side, we have this brown trend line, we have this red trend line, and we have the 600. So around here, which is an area, all, uh, don't, don't ever draw, draw laser lines you know, on your chart or laser levels that I'm look, going to look for buy setups at the 500 exactly, right? It's always an area. So here's a very strong area to look for buy setups. I usually like to make it like this. Let me show you. Here we go. I'd like to make it like this. I'm going to look for buy setups and I usually put this like this. I'm going to look for longs for buy setups as price approaches this area. And I'm going to look for sell setups as price approaches this area. For now, I've deleted to, to make our chart cleaner. And now we'll zoom into lower time frames. Uh, and of course, as mentioned before, since, since, since this one is broken, it's not really, really broken as we had a gap and then price went down. For, for, for a level for or a zone to be broken, we want two big momentum candles. For now, as you can see, we only had one momentum candle. Now, if we had another big momentum candle, then we can say that this one is broken and we'll be looking for buy setups on, on the three test. But it's not really broken yet. And you can even, but on weekly time frame, it's not broken. So you can keep it either this way, or you can simply, here we go, make an offset for this channel. And that's it. Let me make it lower. And as you can clearly see, it's a typical clean channel, right? Let me fix uh, this one and put the auto again. Here we go. Right, so from daily time frame, we know that price is trading inside this channel. We had a momentum impulse movement upward, as mentioned from weekly. Price is now stuck inside this range, right? So we'll be looking for buy setups around the lower trend line trend following buy setups and sell setups around the upper uh, red trend line, right? And here we go. So that, that's what we know from daily time frame. Now we can zoom into lower time frames and look for possible sell setups here and buy setups here. And since price is now midway, 
right? It's, it's a setting in the middle of nowhere, and some people call it no man's land, right? We are not interested in buying or selling Netflix, waiting for it to approach this area to look for longs or approach this area to look for shorts, for high probability shorts and longs with a good risk to reward ratio. Of course, I don't think that we, we may uh, we, we can add we can add anything from H4. That's right. Now we can zoom into a H1 and M30 time frame to look for possible buy setups. For now, price from a short term perspective, price is overall bearish. Right here we go, lower lows and lower highs. Right, lower high, lower high, lower high, and lower low, lower low, lower low. So we are in a bearish trend from a short-term perspective but since price is approaching a very very strong area as mentioned before we have we have our gap that needs to be filled right we have our 500 and we have our uh, red trend line so from here we'll be looking for buy setups for trend following by setups in this case so that's why let's zoom in and we'll try to draw trend lines here we go let me extend it around here and let's make it an orange since we already have many, many colors, right? So for now, we know that we are overall bearish and we can even make an offset and here we go. So for now, we're waiting for Netflix to trade even lower and lower, right? And then we'll be looking for buy setups when the last uh, high is broken upward. So price uh, price doesn't have to make this movement exactly, but we'll be waiting for a new swing. First of all, we want Netflix to go lower, right? Because we are only interested in buying around here, around this entire area, right? We have a gap, 500 and red trend line, and only selling around here, right? But here we didn't have a set of opportunity. As you can clearly see, price went up aggressively and then went down. But if we can go back, we, we, here we go. We can go back if you zoom in. That, that's it. We, we could look for setups around here since we have our brown trend line and red trend line, and of course the 600 above it. And we also have a very good, here we go. We had a very good supply zone around here. We can see it even better from H4 and H1 since we only monitor supply and demand zones from daily and weekly. And yes, but by the way, since we are talking about supply and demand, hopefully the next video would be about supply and demand. What are supply and demand, how to identify it, how to trade it, and so on. But here, let's get back to Netflix. Price is going up, making higher highs and higher lows, right? But starting from here, the momentum is getting weaker and weaker. Price was making big impulse, big impulse, but here price started to make very small impulse movement, then here we had an aggressive correction downward. So as price approach around here, here and here, starting from here, we are starting to look for sell setups since price is approaching a very strong resistance area, right? And as you clearly see, here we had a head, right shoulder and left shoulder, left shoulder and right shoulder, right? Cheers. So price was going up, hit a resistance, a very strong dejection area, formed a head and shoulders pattern. And the head and shoulders pattern is simply a market structure. M market structure perspective, we can see that if price was going up, making higher highs and higher lows, then price failed to make a higher high and instead made a lower high, right? So that's our early alert that the bulls are tired but nothing is confirmed yet. The confirmation would be after a momentum candle close below the previous low, which is, which is known as the neckline of the head and shoulders pattern. And that's exactly what happened. Price was going up, higher highs, higher highs, higher highs, higher lows, blah, 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 blah. And then price couldn't make a higher high. Price made a lower high. So now we have a head and shoulders pattern, left shoulder, head and right shoulder. And here would be our neckline covering the entire structure. Our entry would be after a momentum candle close below the neckline, stop loss above the right shoulder, and two to one risk to reward ratio, which would be around our lower, our lower support area. And starting from here, we'll be looking for buy setups. 
So let's continue. And here as well, we can start to look for buy setups. Anyway, let's focus on the current price action now. Price rejected our upper uh, resistance without giving us a clear uh, uh, entry. So we didn't sell here. But we are starting to look for buy setups as price approaches our lower support. Now price can still break our upper orange trend line upward, but we will not buy since price is sitting in the middle of nowhere, as mentioned before. Then price breaks it upward. We know that we, we may we may have this movement. We are we are bullish as price broke above the last high, right? So we now we have a shift in momentum from a short term perspective, but we will not buy, right? Since price is, is not sitting around the support. We're only interested in buying here and selling here. So now if price breaks it upward, we'll wait for it to approach our all-time high and this uh, uh, rejection area to look for sell setups. But for now, since it's sitting inside this channel, we'll be waiting for it to form uh, a new swing high. First of all, waited, waiting for it to approach our, uh, our lower uh, uh, support area and then to look for buy setups and here's here's a probable uh, scenario then we'll enter buy after a momentum candle close above the last swing high and of course our stop loss goes just below the previous swing low and we we'll target at one is to avoid issue which would be around our upper rejection area and of course price can still go down trade a little bit around here for like maybe like a double bottom pattern Right, and then we'll enter on the neckline break upward or even an inverse head and shoulders. So we can't really know what may happen, but we know from a market structure perspective and from weekly and daily time frames that we are interested in, in buying Netflix around here. And of course, let me remove, uh, don't want to see it on daily, right? Not on weekly, and this one as well. unless right so we are overall bullish unless price breaks our lower red trend line right of course not only the trend line the last swing low then and only then we can say that we may have a shift in momentum and for for those who who, who like to enter to, to enter long-term trades can enter a sell stop us above the last swing high and two to one is reward ratio which would be around this support area right which is from weekly time frame here we go which is around here here we have a very very strong area to look for by setups as we have this outer trend line in brown and this 400 which is a very strong resistance and very strong bound number so if price breaks it downward as mentioned from daily we can look for sell setups on this swing low break downward sell and then as price approaches this area we'll be looking for trend following by setups that's that that's for our reversal scenario and for our here we go let me show you and here we go and for our trend continuation we have this ascending triangle for weekly time frame as this one isn't broken yet in this case, to have a trend following setup, just like what happened here, we want a big bullish candle, very big one, or, or, or at least two, either a very, very big one or two small ones, okay? Not, not very small, momentum ones, but, uh, but either a big one or two, or two smaller ones, okay? Then only then we can see that the bulls are gaining momentum again, gaining control again, and we'll be looking for trend following buy setups on three test. So these are the only possible, the, all the possible scenarios on, on Netflix. And hope you liked the video and I'll see you on the next one. If you have any questions or would you like me to talk about a specific topic as I'm, I'm, I'm running out of ideas, just you can feel free to, to, to let me know in the comments and I would be happy to add it to my, to my video list. And hopefully next time would be about supply and demand. Cheers and trade safely. Bye-bye.